Now let's talk about energy systems a little bit. I won't, I, I think this is a, a, a pretty uh, simple way. I'm a former chemistry teacher, so I won't get in the weeds too much. You know, the, the football is all anaerobic. It's the alactic system. That's where we do something really intense for five or six seconds. It's high intensity, short duration. Now remember that because that's where you really want to stay when you're training football players. In track and field, I have to do a lot of work in season on this crap. And this is really hard. This is where we sprint maybe 10 to 50 seconds. We get acidic. We get dizzy. We get kind of sickly. Sometimes kids throw up. A blurred vision. This is high intensity, moderate duration. By moderate duration, we're sprinting a long way. Now I ask you, is this important for football training? And the answer is no. Yes, you will be, if, if you return um, a kickoff 99 yards, you will be winded at the end, but you won't be slow. And about two minutes later, you'll be fine. There's no reason to train for long kick returns. And then there's the aerobic part. This is long, continuous, submax exercise, sometimes called cardio. This is low intensity, but high in duration. One of the biggest mistakes, and one, one of the things that Feed the Cats has revolutionized training with is the idea that we do not have to have a big foundation of aerobic fitness before we go into the season. In Feed the Cats, we say that aerobic fitness interferes with speed and power gains and it doesn't have to happen so we kind of ignore this aerobic stuff i know some of you will be bothered by this but i'll explain uh, i think everybody knows high school football is highly anaerobic it's about a five second play about a 30 second rest there's about 60 total plays unless you hurry up and then then you may have 70 or 80 if you played every offensive play one side of the ball, you're probably going to play about five minutes of football in a period of time, uh, what, 140 minutes? 140 minutes, you get to play five. The NFL is even crazier. Five seconds, 32 seconds between plays. The average game, because of commercials and stuff, three hours and 12 minutes. There's only 11 minutes of actual football in a three hour and 12 minute game. Uh, there's 17 minutes of replays. There's 75 minutes of televised players standing around, loitering. And that doesn't even count the commercials. The commercials are totally separate. So to say that, that as Brad said, that, that the game is a choppy game is an understatement. There, it's, it's basically a little bit of action and a whole lot of standing around. And the average drive is only six plays. So the whole idea that we have to be in shape for a 20 play drive, uh, that might happen to 10% of all teams once in a, in a year. I mean, it just doesn't happen. And even then you're getting 30 seconds rest and all that stuff. This is the slide I actually had uh, the last time we did this, I, I had this slide and uh, there is a uh, hall of fame coach in Illinois, 30 years in the business, incredible record. He said when he saw this slide, his life changed. He said, when I saw this slide, I realized that my beautiful artistic practices of continuous movement was totally horseshit. That we need to have a choppier practice. We need to be faster in practice by doing less continuous movement. Now, this is what one of our lactate workouts looks like. This is when the guys have, you know, they're, they're dizzy, uh, blurred vision, acidic, a little sickly. You do not have to ever do this to football players, ever. And since there's no continuous play, you don't have to do this crap. If you look at the way these guys look when they're running, are they becoming more athletic? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, they're developing terrible sprint habits. We will say this over and over again, but by crowding together intense work, we can become aerobically fit. Now, we will talk a lot about conditioning, but one of my biggest problems with conditioning is conditioning makes you tired. It also makes you slow. 
It's, it's so crazy to me that the goal of sports in America for years and years and years, maybe since the dawn of sports, every practice, the goal was to get you freaking tired. That, that's what practice was all about. We, we had torturous practice in order to justify getting, a, getting to uh, play in the games. Fast players, I believe, are fast in the fourth quarter. No, I don't believe that. I know that. Um, fast players are fast in the fourth quarter, and slow players are slow in the fourth quarter. So instead of trying to get everybody in shape, I think you should try to get everybody fast. We're going to talk about speed reserve, but speed reserve means the faster you are, the faster you are when you're slow. A lactic specificity, it, you know, like this is a big word and stuff. All this means if football plays last for five seconds, what are you doing? Doing um, 30 minute stadium stair runs. You know, what are you doing? You only play five minutes of football in a game. And I always throw this on because um, the first game is when 90% of all muscle cramps happen. And it has nothing to do with Gatorade, bananas, pickle juice, conditioning, uh, hydration, blah, blah, blah. It all has to do with the fact that you are playing in third gear all week. Matter of fact, all camp, you're playing in third gear because you're in a constant state of fatigue. You are constantly running between drill to drill. So you're never able to get that motor running at your top speed. And then you go into the first game and everybody's top speed, or at least as fast as you can go. And and your uh, nerve muscle reflex arc rebels. And so you get cramps. So if you want to uh, take care of first and second game cramps, by the way, how come there are no cramps in the third and fourth game? It's because you're finally training. The games actually start to train you for the next game. But how will we get in shape? Well, we're going to get in shape by intensity, recovery, and repeat. As Brad said, uh, Brad, what, what's your statement? It's, pretty close to this right yeah <clears throat> relentless rest repeat yep pretty much the same thing um and the great thing is by doing it this way we are not sacrificing speed power and elasticity and when we talk about high school kids are high school kids anywhere near where they should be speed wise the answer is no they are so far away you could argue that college players are pretty close to their speed ceiling by the time they get there and so you don't have to worry about it anymore. I think you should still worry about it. But, but that's, you know, the idea that we're going to focus on speed and power instead of getting tired every day, that, mean, that means a lot, I think, uh, uh, to winning. Now, Brian Kula, a good friend of mine, he trains uh, Christian McCaffrey. He says that, that Christian gets aerobically fit by stacking together anaerobic work. Not one day in the offseason does Brian Kula put – Christian McCaffrey through an endurance workout, not one single day. But who won the Carolina Panthers endurance test last year? Christian McCaffrey. And that's totally counterintuitive because the textbooks all say that you have to have this aerobic base. There was nothing aerobically focused that Christian McCaffrey did in the summer. However, was he aerobically fit? Hell yes. Oh, but the textbook says. The textbook says, I want to move these here so I can get a little, there we go. Uh, without, I actually got this from a 2015 stack article today. Without a good aerobic base, an athlete will struggle to recover during high intensity exercise. Our body's low intensity aerobic energy systems help our high intensity systems, ATP, PC, and anaerobic glycolysis recover and prepare for our next bout of activity. This is the thing that's in every s &C textbook. This is the thing that is, you know, like traditional thought. And this is why summers are grueling endurance marathons that totally ignore speed and power and try to get players tired all summer. I'm here to say that the experts have always been wrong. I, now, let, a good friend of mine is Cal Dietz. Cal Dietz talks the same shit where he says, you got to have at least a two or three week aerobic uh, foundation before you move on to the next. But then when I say, describe your aerobic stuff, he says, well, we'll do a, like a max lift and kind of hurry to the next lift. 
I go, that's anaerobic stuff. That's crowding together anaerobic stuff. He goes, of course. I said, then, then it's not aerobic. Aerobic is like jogging. Aerobic is stadium stairs. Aerobic is 20 or 20 half-ass 40s at the end of practice. That's aerobic. He goes, oh, no, you can get aerobically in shape by doing anaerobic work. Okay, now I'm good with that then. Um, th this is a, a good story, too. Here I am in high school. Um, my, my best three-mile time in my life was 1930. And I had a, 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 a friend, a guy that was a teammate of mine, that ran the three-mile in 1424. That's really fast. He was third in the state of Illinois in cross country. And, and you would think that Dave Finistad was in much better shape than I was. Much better shape. Well, I don't know about that. He was in better shape for the three mile. But I kicked his ass every time I ever ran a 400 against him. I ran a 50.2 in the, in the four. He never broke 52. Oh, and, and his first day of basketball practice, two days after getting third place in the state of Illinois in cross country, I beat him on the first suicide. And that's the only one he ran because he's thrown up. So he was in a different type of shape. I would argue that you, you do not want guys who are in fantastic aerobic shape. You want guys that are in fantastic anaerobic shape. Okay, prioritization of speed, my favorite slide of all times. Um, if you go into eight different directions, you end up going nowhere. I believe this is the average football coach. He tries to do too much and, and he fails to see what truly matters. And what truly matters is speed and power. So what I do and what Feed the Cats preaches is that we want to get better at what matters. So if we put all of our energy into the same direction, we will get further. Now the true priority will actually be, <laughs> will be rest. It's really, really important to understand this. I remember one time Brad was presenting at Track Football Consortium, and he was talking about how speed was the priority, and I corrected him. I said, hey, it's not really the priority. Rest and recovery is the priority, because if you don't do that, you can't have speed. And he goes, yeah, I guess you're right. Here's McCaffrey. The, my shift in training philosophy has involved a true appreciation for the concept of less is more. Rest, for me, is training. Do you know, I mean, this is, this is revolutionary for football because in football, we, we've just worked and worked and worked at getting guys tired and well-conditioned and tough that somehow the more tired we were on a constant basis, the tougher we were, and that somehow toughness won games. I think speed and power wins games. The lowest intensity work you do should still look like performance. If it doesn't, it will have a detraining effect. This is the legendary Vince Anderson. He is my idol. Um, Texas A&M uh, sprint coach, um, coach Olympians, blah, blah, blah. And it is so true that if, if you are jogging, that doesn't look like football. He calls it a 14-point turnaround. Every time you have a conditioning-focused practice, you are not only getting tired and slow. That's bad. That's like losing seven points, like maybe a touchdown that you should have scored. But you are also failing to improve your speed and power. So it's like you're not scoring a touchdown, but you're throwing an interception that leads to a touchdown. So it's like a 14-point turnaround every time you do it. The grind makes it difficult to train your most explosive muscle fibers. I, I, I don't know if there's ever a truer statement that, that when you are tired, you cannot improve speed. You can't work on speed. You cannot work on power. So tired is the enemy. Nido omo wa ido mo ezu. If you chase two rabbits, this is Japanese, chase two rabbits, you'll catch neither one of them. So the rabbit on the left is the speed and power rabbit. The rabbit on the right is the endurance rabbit. To me, it is, it is absolutely 100% true that you've got to chase speed and power. <laughs>